Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Family Life Center. Praise the Lord. Saints, what a blessing to come to you tonight with the word of God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We magnify your wonderful name. Wherever you are, in the house, maybe um, preparing dinner for the house, maybe um, just coming from work, wherever you are, maybe um, you're listening to this message from um, the hotel, motel, wherever you are. Praise God. Why don't you join us here and let's worship the Lord for a minute. For his worthy. I say he's worthy. Praise the name of the living God. Almighty God. You alone and you alone are worthy. The creator of all things. Visible and invisible. The ancient of days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Hallelujah. The creator of all things. Jesus God Almighty. Magnify your wonderful name, O Lord. We praise your name, O Lord. We exalt your holy name for you alone and you alone are worthy. There's no one else like you, God Almighty. There is none. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. What a wonderful God that we serve today and in our generation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to your wonderful name. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Saints, let's go before the Lord with a short prayer. Every Father, we come before your throne of grace. And as we magnify your name and praise your holy name, God Almighty, we ask in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, to anoint your word, my lips of clay. Bless us, O oh Lord, your children. Your word, God Almighty, is um, what we hide in our hearts and sin and against you. It is your word. The Father is a lamp to our feet, a light to our pathway. So we pray, the Father, you will feed us as we have gathered tonight at your table. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, sisters. Thank you, church. I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me this opportunity. Come a long ways. I've come a long ways. And uh, for the Lord to um, open this door for me to come and minister to his people with that say yes to the Lord. Something that no man of God or servant of the Lord takes for granted. It's a privilege, but it also carries a lot of uh, responsibility. So help me, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I also want to thank the man of God, my pastor, uh, the Deus, for giving me this opportunity to come and minister to God's people. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I also want to thank my, what God is doing my family, my beautiful wife. Hallelujah. Also from the jungle somewhere. Hello, somebody. Praise God. Praise God. God knows what he's doing. And I thank God for my family. Praise God. Saints, have you ever run into a Christian? Who complains almost about everything and anything? Have you ever run into a Christian who looks like he's been sucking on lemons all day? Praise God. Have you also run into someone who is bitter about his or her life? The Christian who shouts victory in Jesus yet lives a defeated life. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. Let me share with you a story about this woman who had a lot of trouble in her life. 
So someone told her about the Lord Jesus. And so finally, um, she said, okay, I will give it a trial. So she gave her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is a woman that was being tormented by the devil. The devil will knock on the door and then she opened the door. The devil comes in and caused a lot of uh, devastation, a lot of trouble in her house, in her home. So she got tired. Finally, she decided to give her life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So Christ comes in and says, okay, since you've invited me to the house, what I want from you is give me the keys to the whole house. I want you to surrender everything to me. And the woman said, well, what about giving you one room in the house? Then I keep three rooms to myself. It was a four-bedroom house. She says, okay. If that's how you want it, you got it. So Jesus is in one room and she takes the rest of the room. So in other words, this woman is still in charge of the house. You know, later the adversary, the devil comes in and knock on the door. And of course, when someone is knocking at the door to the house, the person that answers to the door is the owner of the house, the one in charge of the house, not the guest. So she goes and opens the door and guess what it was? It was the devil and comes in and destroys everything. And so the woman goes back to the Lord and says, wait a minute, Jesus. I thought I have given my life to you. I gave you one room. Jesus said, well, that's the problem. I told you to give me the whole key to the house. So the, lead, the woman said, well, guess what? I give you two more rooms. And I keep the rest. So you have two and I have two. He says, well, if that's the way you want it, you got it. Well, needless to say, the devil comes in again. Knock on the door. So this woman goes and opens the door and the devil comes in and destroys everything. So she turns to Jesus and says, wait a minute. I've given my life to you. I have given you two rooms in the house. Jesus said, I told you, you need to give me everything. Finally, she agreed and gave the key of the house to the Lord Jesus Christ. So now Jesus is in control. And guess who came knocking on the door again? The devil comes in. Bible said to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So she comes. He comes in again. Knock on the door. I guess this time it wasn't the woman because she have uh, surrendered everything to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is in control. So he went and opened the door and excuse me how may i help you and of course the devil said excuse me i think i got the wrong house and she fl he fled the devil fled away it was the same house but guess what jesus was not in charge praise god so tonight saints god almighty is going to speak to us about absolute surrender to him a complete surrender that leads to a victorious christian life if i were to title this message i would say absolute surrender to jesus equals a victorious christian life let me repeat that an absolute surrender to jesus equals a victorious Christian life. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, please listen to the lyrics of this old Christian hymnal by John Samis. It goes like this. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. 
and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. He goes on to say, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, nor a sign or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. The last laurel or stanza goes like this. Then in fellowship, sweet we will sit at his feet or walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do. Where he sends, we will go. Never fear. Only trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Brothers and sisters, saints, the King James Version of the Bible Dictionary defines surrender this way. To yield, to give up, to concede. So, an absolute surrender to Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters, means that a believer, that a Christian who completely gives up his or her own will and subjects his or her talks, ideas, and deeds to the will and teachings of Christ. Surrender, therefore, brothers and sisters, is willful acceptance and yielding to God and his will. Praise the name of the living God. We're talking tonight about how Christ expects us to Wholly submit to him. We're talking about absolute surrender that leads to a victorious Christian life here on earth. Praise God. This is why, brothers and sisters, the scriptures commands us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It reads thus. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Praise God. But it says in all your ways, submit to him or acknowledge him. And he will make your paths straight. Praise God. Lean not upon your own understanding. Can I hear love learners say praise the Lord? Hello life learners. Praise God. Lean not upon your own understanding. An absolute surrender to Christ, brothers and sisters, means a victorious Christian life here on earth. The Old Testament, listen to this. The Old Testament is full of individuals who surrendered their lives to God completely. And not were they blessed by others as well. Praise God. Watch this. Genesis 5 21. Bible reads, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. Enoch walked faithfully with God. 300 years. Oh my goodness. He walked faithfully with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. The Bible reads, altogether, Enoch lived a total of 
365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more according to the scriptures because God took him away. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Here we see a man who totally surrendered his life to God Almighty. Blessed that he did not die. He was taken home alive. See, God Almighty was so pleased with Enoch that he took him to heaven alive. Brothers and sisters, God wants to remind us tonight and tell us tonight that he is pleased with a life that is surrendered to him. Totally. Totally surrendered to him. Praise the name of the living God. Another biblical example of a completely surrendered life to God is Noah. Praise God. Listen to these saints. Genesis 6, 9. This is the account of Noah, the Bible says, and his family. He said, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. He walked like Enoch. He also walked faithfully with God. That means, brothers and sisters, he surrendered his life, his family to God to the extent that Noah and his family were saved, were protected when God Almighty destroyed the world then by flood. You know the story. Listen to this. Genesis 6, 22 reads, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. That is an example, brothers and sisters, of a surrendered life to God. Surrendered to God. He did everything that God commanded him. Genesis 7, 5 also reads, And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Praise God. Are you doing everything that the Lord is instructing us to do? Are you trusting and obeying the Lord? Are you living a surrendered life to God? Or are you holding back? Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. That is an example, brothers and sisters, of a surrendered life and will that pleases the Lord God Almighty. And because Noah submitted completely to God's will, not only his family and him were saved, but by this single family, guess what? The whole world was replenished or repopulated as we know it today. God destroyed everything except for Noah and his family. So you and I are here today because of someone, Noah, who surrendered his life completely to the Lord. And God bless him. And that blessing extended to you and I today in our generation. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. And what can we say, brothers and sisters, about Father Abraham? Praise the name of the living God. Listen to this. The Bible said the moment God called him from Ur of the Chaldees, which is the modern Iraq, Abraham surrendered his life and will completely to God. He surrendered his will and life to God to the point that he offered, he offered his only son Isaac to God. You know the story. He did. But we know the angels stop him. Then in his heart, he did offer his son Isaac, his only son, as a sacrifice to God, even though God intervened and stopped him from hurting that young man. Praise God. 
Praise the name of the living God. So what happens, brothers and sisters, when a Christian completely surrenders his life and will to God? When a Christian learns to walk with God in every aspect of his or her life? Abraham's example, brothers and sisters, shows us that life suddenly gets what? Thrilling, exciting, and very challenging when we submit completely to God. Praise the name of the living God. It is time, brothers and sisters, in the time that we're living in, to examine ourselves. Yes, you do come to church. Yes, you do speak in tongues but have you completely surrendered your whole life and will to the lord are you holding back some areas of your life from him what about two lifelines if i can touch you for a minute lifeline what a beautiful program that we have in our church Lifeline, have you completely surrendered your life, your will to the Lord? Or are you playing program? Are you playing the part? Not until we completely surrender our will and ourselves to God, we will not have victory in our lives. Praise the name of the living God. So we got to surrender. Praise the name of the living God. So, brothers and sisters, as God is trying to talk to us tonight about an absolute surrender to him, which will equal a victorious Christian life or walk with him. In Christianity, brothers and sisters, the first main principle of surrender is dying to self. Let me repeat that again. In Christianity, the first main principle of surrender is dying to self. Or the carrying of your cross. That is to say, allowing Christ Jesus to reign and to rule over every aspect of your life. Praise the name of the living God. So the question tonight, brothers and sisters, whether young, whether old, whether great or small, is Christ the Lord of your life? Is he in control of every area of your life? Your marriage? Your job? Your business? Your finances? Is Christ, have you surrendered? every aspect of your life to Christ. Because when we do, that's when we have a victorious Christian life here on earth. Listen to this. May 2, 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if anyone or any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Praise God. A completely surrendered life, brothers and sisters, allows Christ Jesus' perfect will be done in our lives. His perfect will. We become like clay in the potter's hands. God is able to mold and shape a life that is surrendered to him and he molds it and shapes it to become the vessel that he wants it to be for his honor and glory but listen to this christ god almighty he cannot do what he wants to do with our lives until we completely surrender to his will 
Praise God. Let me share with you. You know how it is when you have an encounter with uh, the police. Driving and you get pulled over by tr in the traffic. Whatever might be the cause. You've always been told by family members, by parents, when you get pulled over, to put your hands on the steering wheels and don't look anywhere, just look straight. And when you are called to get out of the car, make sure your hands are all raised up and you follow every instruction given to you. You follow them and follow the instructions. They put you on the hood and there your hands are all on the hood. Whether they ask you to lie down on the ground, you follow every instruction they give you. What have you done? You have surrendered your life and your will at the moment to that police officer. Come on, lifeline. Brothers, you know what I'm talking about. Hello? Hello, somebody. How many times do we get put over? How many times we fearful for our lives didn't want to mess up so we followed we surrendered we yielded we conceded to the officer praise god that's how christ wants us to do brothers and sisters listen to this isaiah 64 8 he reads yet you lord are our father we are the clay you are the porter. We are all the work of your hand. Saints, can you say that to the Lord? That he is in total control of your life? Praise God. The second principle, brothers and sisters, central to the Christian concept of surrender is the concept of surrender to God's will. Praise God. This means that I acknowledge God's sovereignty over all things. And that I am willing as a son, as his daughter, to surrender my will to him. Praise God. Praise God. Again, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, submit to him. Acknowledge his sovereignty over all things. And he will make your paths straight. That is, he will bring it to pass. That which concerns you. Praise the name of the living God. Brothers and sisters, we're talking tonight about an absolute surrender to God. Surrendering every area of our lives to God. That is the only way to have a complete victory as a child of God. God wants the whole of us. Not some part of us. Not some areas of our life. Remember the woman who will not give a whole house, ownership to Christ. He have Christ in the house, but she did not totally surrender. She did not have victory over the devil until she finally gave the keys of the house to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about tonight, brothers and sisters. You might be faithful to the church. You pay your tithes and offering. But have you surrendered other areas of your life to Christ? Listen to this. My complete surrender to Christ, brothers and sisters, is evidenced by the acknowledgement of God's will for our personal lives and even the smallest decisions. And this is done, brothers and sisters, through putting personal desires aside in favor of God's perfect will for our lives. 
Praise the name of the living God. Did you know God's interested in every area or aspect of our lives? Every decision that we make, whether great or small, God Almighty want to be involved. That is a surrendered life. When we involve Christ Jesus in every area of our lives, whether great or small, that is a surrendered life that leads to victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is trusting the Lord with all your heart and leaning not on your own understanding. But in every way, jobs, your business, your finances, who to marry? Hello, somebody. Everything given it to the Lord, surrendering to the Lord. Are you looking, brother, at her looks? That's what is driving you to pursue this sister in the church? And what about you, sister? Are you looking at the size of his wallet? Hello, somebody. Is that why you are showing interest in him? Because of the good job that he has. Or have you surrendered this need in your life to the Lord? The Bible says, commit your ways to the Lord. In the book of Psalm 37, 5. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will do it. Praise God. God's talking to us about a surrendered life. Surrendering our will. Surrendering our life completely to him. Praise God. Some of you that, um, or some of us that were um, uh, bound by uh, drugs and alcohol. Hello, somebody. Huh? The devil comes in, you're trying to get some sleep. And the devil says, what? You're getting some sleep. Get up and go out. We went in and out, in and out, in and out until the next day break. We have surrendered our lives completely to the devil and he was destroying our lives. We, could not, we didn't even care for food. All we cared about is the devil's what? Food, the drugs and the alcohol, whatever it was that the devil had you bound. Hello, somebody. We became enslaved. The Bible said, whatever you uh, uh, enslave yourself to, you become a slave to that. Satan was our master. He had us bound. And maybe you never had anything to do with drinking or doing drugs, but what about the other uh, thing that Satan has you bound? Prostitution and, and, and fornication and and all the other vices. Praise God. We were bound. We surrendered everything to the devil. And he was destroying us. And Jesus wants to turn it around. Now that we have given our life to him. He does not want us to hold back any aspect of our lives. Because absolute surrender to him equals a victorious Christian life. Listen to this. Concerning Christ, surrender to the Father. Christ Jesus is our model also. Listen to this. But made himself of no reputation. Christ Jesus made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found... In fashion as a man, he humbled Christ Jesus himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Praise God. Philippians 2, 7 to 8. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Thy will be done. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus, our Savior, the Lord our God, 
set the example for us. What it means to surrender your life, your will, completely to God Almighty. This is why you and I, we are here today. Because he was willing to surrender his life and will to the Father's will. Praise God. What a wonderful example. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder what will happen, brothers and sisters, if you and I completely surrendered our lives and wills to God. Noah did. And because of his surrender, the whole world, as we said before, was repopulated after the destruction of the world then by flood. Father Abraham, oh my goodness, totally surrendered to God and his will. And because of that, Christ Jesus, the Messiah, came down his line of genealogy. Praise God. By Christ's complete surrender to the Father's will, salvation, brothers and sisters, is free to everyone and anyone who will call upon the name of the living God. Praise God. Listen to this. Book of Acts 4.12. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind from the east to the west, from the north to the south. Nowhere, no other name is given to our generation. We also, by which we must be saved. It's not by Buddha. It's not by Muhammad. It's not by any religion. It's not by some philosophy. It's not by some ideology. Brothers and sisters, the only name given to us today in our generation is the name what? Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. And I say, what's his name? Jesus. What is his name? Jesus. What is his name? Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So, if you and I will completely surrender our lives and wills to God, he would do awesomely an amazing thing in our generation, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our cities. What God would do with a surrendered life. Praise God. What God would do with a surrendered life. Praise God. A completely surrendered life, brothers and sisters, will cause you to say or have this attitude as Paul did. Philippians 3, 7. Paul had this attitude when he completely surrendered his life to God. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing wealth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Galatians 3.17 Paul says the following, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Praise the name of the living God. That sounds like a, a life that is completely surrendered to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, saints, that is what God is looking for, a surrendered life. Praise God. That means I have made up my mind as a Christian, we got to get to the place in our relationship with the Lord where we make up our mind to surrender, to yield my whole being, our whole being, our life to Christ. He's the center of my life every day and everywhere. Not only when I go to church, he is in total control of my whole being. My marriage, 
my family, my job, my business, my finances. That is the attitude of a surrendered life to God. Praise God. And because everything I have is his. He's the Christian who has surrendered everything to God. He said, because everything I have is his, I cheerfully, not grudgingly, pay my tithes and offering. Praise God. Do you hesitate, brothers and sisters? Is anyone out there who hesitates to pay their tithes and offering? Maybe you have not completely surrendered everything to the Lord. Listen to this. What the psalmist declares in Psalm 51, 16 to 17. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. You do not delight in sacrifice. Or how would bring it? You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit. For a broken and a contract heart, you, O oh God, will not despise. Praise God. Hallelujah. A broken and a contra heart, God says he will not reject or despise. God Almighty, brothers and sisters, only delights himself in a broken and a contract heart. A surrendered life and will. Proverbs 23, 26 reads, My son or my daughter, give me your heart. And let your eyes delight in my ways. Let me read that again. Psalms 23, 26. The Lord read. The Bible reads. My son or my daughter. Give me your heart. And let your eyes delight in my ways. Praise God. That is what pleases God Almighty. A surrendered heart. That's what he's looking for. In every area of our lives, surrender your whole being to the Lord. Not half stepping. Half stepping. Giving some aspects of your life to God and holding back some aspects of your life does not lead to a victorious Christian life. God wants your whole heart. Praise God. God Almighty seeks after a completely surrendered life. Praise God. And as I come to a close, praise the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, why don't you let the words of this song by Israel Hutton be your prayer to the Lord concerning surrendering to him. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Listen to this. The name of the song is All to Jesus I Surrender. All to Jesus I Surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence, daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. The second verse reads, Let it be your prayer to the Lord concerning Surrendering completely to him. Listen to this. Let it be your prayer. All to Jesus, I surrender. Humbly at his feet, I bow. Worldly pleasures or earthly pleasures or forsaking. Take me, Jesus. Take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my 
blessed Savior. I surrender. Oh, listen to this. Oh, to thee, Jesus, I surrender. Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Listen to this. All to Jesus. I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. Now I feel the secret flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to his name. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, blessed Savior. I surrender all. Praise the name of the living God. Brothers and sisters, an absolute surrender to Christ leads to a victorious Christian life here on earth. Not giving some part of our lives, but Christ Jesus is asking you and I in the time that we live in to surrender completely to him. Surrender, surrender, surrender. An absolute surrender equals a victorious Christian life. Why don't you surrender? Brothers and sisters, why don't you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Why don't you examine your heart? Is it is it because you have not totally surrendered your life? Is that why you are not totally happy with your life, even as a Christian? Is it because you have not totally made up your mind that Christ Jesus is your all in all? Not until we get to the place, saints, not until we make up our mind, as Joshua told the children of Israel, they were going up and down, didn't you know. One day they were on top of the mountain. One day they are backslidden. Finally he said, make up your mind. Make up your mind, children of Israel. And as for me and my family, as for me and my household, our minds are made up. We have totally surrendered to the Lord. We're going to save the Lord. All of us. Whatever your position in the church, and this is not about positions or title. God Almighty, you might be in the ministry. You are faithful to your ministry. You might be a preacher, and you're faithful to your ministry. You might be in the choir, praise team, and yes, you delight to sing, and, and we appreciate all that you do. Whatever ministry. What about other areas of your life? Christ wants every area of our lives surrendered to him. And not until we do that, brothers and sisters, we're going to struggle. We're not going to experience the total victory that comes by surrendering completely to the Lord. Praise the name of the living God. Praise the name of the living God. And maybe someone invited you to listen to this message Maybe you have not given your life to Christ Jesus. I ask you and I plead 
that you do so. That you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If you have not as yet have an encounter with the Almighty God, great Jesus, whatever you are, whatever you are, why don't you surrender? Why don't you surrender in a motel room, in a hotel room, in a kitchen, in a bathroom, whatever you are, hearing this message, God wants your heart. He loves you so much that if you were the only person on the face of this earth, guess what? Great Jesus who still would have come down to save you. That's how much he loves you and I. Christ's love for men, for that generation, men and women, everyone, is far beyond human understanding. The love of God. The love of God. So whatever you are, why don't you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Or maybe you say, well, brother, if I, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus I'm a Christian. And maybe I have backslidden. Oh, backslider. Do you know that the Lord Jesus is still married to you? Hallelujah. Far beyond human comprehension. Far beyond our human understanding. That even though we might backslide and go out there and mess around and mess up, you know you don't fit in there. You know you cannot fit in the world. You're trying to fit in. And you've been delivered. You belong to the Almighty God. What a blessing to be a child of the living God. But you are backsliding. What you need, I say, what you need is a broken heart. A broken and a contra heart. Jesus will not re reject. Godly sorrow. That's what the Bible calls it. Godly sorrow that causes you and I to repentance. If you are backsliding, if your relationship with the Lord, brothers and sisters, have become estranged, no one is perfect. None of us are perfect. But we cannot ignore that once in a while we stray back to the world. We are all learning to walk with Jesus. No one is perfect. We are all learning to walk with the Lord. We are all learning to live for him in this life so in the process once in a while we may stumble and fall and as brother Robert was telling us the other day it's not about falling but it's what about getting up and dusting up yourself so backslider or you whose relationship with the Lord have become estranged or maybe on the verge of becoming estranged God is speaking to you tonight why don't you repent? You run into his arms. His arms are still outstretched. Waiting for you, my slander. Waiting for you. He said, my son, I'm waiting for you, my daughter. Why don't you come back? I scarlet though your sins are. The blood of Jesus wash you. You shall become as white as snow. My slander. Why don't you run into the arms of the Lord? You who have allowed your relationship with the Lord to become estranged. Why don't you repent? Whatever you are, whatever you are, why don't you repent? For God Almighty, Christ Jesus, the Holy One, a broken and a contrite heart, you will not despise. Praise the name of the living God. Every Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your word. You love us so much. You came and laid down your life now alive and alive forevermore and teaching us Lord in this life how your children learn to walk of you how we learn Father to live for you as our forefathers learn to walk with you tonight you have spoken to us to surrender every aspect of our lives to you Lord so we thank you Father for your word now we ask you, Lord, you will strengthen us. We pray the Lord you will help us that we take your word deep into our hearts. And examine our hearts that we may surrender our lives and our will to you for your honor and your glory. Jesus.
Jesus name amen na amen na amen praise the name of the living god hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah